It's nine years before the events of Arkham Asylum and it's Christmas Eve. We're taking a trip down memory lane to a time when a freshly traumatized Bruce Wayne was just a young brooding billionaire with some seriously mid street cred. There is no such thing as a Batman. You just want to enjoy your Christmas dinner, but Black Mask arranges a play date with Gotham's worst and uh, hottest? Ah, the return of the Y Boner with a vengeance. Join single and ready to mingle man on his quest to save Gotham and hopefully meet that special someone. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. In this back in time prequel title that, let's be honest, was only made because we killed the Joker last game. Batman Arkham Origins. Oh boy, I really didn't like you back in 2013. As you guys know in the comments of the last two Arkham videos we've discussed, if you haven't already, go check those out. Thank you so much. Mwah. I didn't really like Origins that much, and actually, to be honest, I never completed it. I don't know, something about the game felt off to me back then. Maybe it was because it felt rushed by New Kid on the Block, Warner Brother Games, who take the reins from Rocksteady this time around. No, I mean other developers can do just as good stuff as other developers, right? Maybe it was the insane amount of game-breaking bugs that plagued this game at launch, and we still have a few we have to deal with. Or maybe it's the lack of Harley Quinn. Kinda. Or maybe it's the plot twist that would have been so amazing if the advertisements and trailers didn't ruin it before the game came out. I'm talking about the Junkler. Maybe it's the season pass that costs half the RRP of the game just for some skins and two hours of content. Or possibly the massive chunks of Arkham City's assets that just got reused. Or maybe it is the new stuff they did like the character models. Dear God. Maybe it's no Harley Quinn. Or maybe it's just Batman being insanely unlikable. And that leads me to talk about the fact that we have lost some extremely talented people this time around. Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill are replaced by Roger Craig Smith as Batman and Troy Baker as the Joker. I get what they were trying to do. They wanted to do a younger Bruce Wayne. A more naive, trying too hard to be intimidating Batman. So of course we get the Sonic the Hedgehog guy. You're too slow! Now to be fair, Roger Craig Smith is a fantastic voice actor and I absolutely loved him as Ezio in Assassin's Creed 2. Ezio, I should have known. May I come in? Fine, but only for a minute. A minute is all I need. Indeed. Well, wait, uh, that came out wrong. And Troy Baker does a great job being the Joker. They give such good performances, but I would be lying if I didn't say you feel the loss of Hamill and Conroy in this game. But anyway, we have a lot of reasons why I did not like this game back at launch. And it's always felt like that red-headed stepchild of a title in the Arkham series. But hold on, going back after all these years to make this video in particular, I have to say, bar a few issues I have with the game still, and we'll get to those. I like this one more than Arkham C. In fact, it is my second favorite Arkham series game so far. I feel like I'm going to get crucified in the comments for saying that, but before I explain myself, let's check out the story because that plays a massive factor here. So let's take a look to see if Batman Arkham Origins was really that good. But first... Hi all, it's Snow Guy in the tie here, but you can just call me Cool Tie. <laughs> this is so stupid. I see a lot of you haven't subscribed yet. That's ice cold to you, baby. I think you should jingle your way down to that sub button and give it a big old kiss under the mistletoe so you can be as cool as me. Look, I subscribed and now I have these two gorgeous babes. So hot in fact they make me melt. That wasn't a joke, help I'm dying. But be sure to hit the subscribe button but also how- Oh man these skits are so dumb. We start the game on Christmas Eve with a young, rugged Bruce Wayne. What's going on here, Bruce? Can't afford a razor? Who hears of a breakout at Blackgate Prison. All units, all units, go 10 at Blackgate Prison. Communication is down. Possible 211. Delta 6-4, on route. Dispatch 5-9. Confirm code 10. This is a breakout. This has to be the worst prison. Whenever we hear about this place, it's either being broken out of, taken over by, or set on fire. Anyway, Batman heads over to stop this and we find out that it was Black Mask's doing. Or was it? Alright, this section gives me instant asylum flashbacks and I'm sure the developer knew what they were doing here. 
and being the sucker that I am, I absolutely love it. I can't deny it. We get into our first few brawls here and I realize something quite quickly. You see, in Arkham City, I got so sick of the hints that popped up telling me to backclaw this or how to do a blade dodge in every encounter that had a blade fug. So I decided for Batman Origins, I'm going to turn these off. So no hints. What I didn't realize was by doing this, I actually turn off the counter vision, the little icon that pops up in the fights from the previous games. I honestly thought through my entire playthrough of this game that this was just how Warner Brothers wanted to do the combat this time around. A ballsy move, I thought, but I absolutely loved it. It made the fights way more fun and I had to pay way more attention to the enemy's movements and movesets. And this is just on normal difficulty. Honestly, I see why you guys told me I should play the games on a harder mode to get rid of this counter icon. It's a game changer. And I could not recommend it more for anyone who wants to play this game. It's more difficult, but it's way more satisfying. Anyway, following the plot, Black Mask kills off Commissioner Loeb, who had been actually working with Black Mask over the years. We're going to see a lot of this over the night. You see, this Gotham is way before Batman is known. So not only are there criminals on every street corner, but the cops and politicians are just as corrupt, which makes Bruce Wayne truly feel alone in this crusade to try and save the city. Failing to save Loeb, we get caught in a tuffle with Killer Croc, who again is kind of put on the sidelines. I don't know what it is, but they love making this guy a filler supervillain. I feel like a giant killer crocodile is way more threatening to a city than the funny riddle guy. But whatever. We knock out Croc and we really get to feel the try hardness coming from Batman this time around as he tries to be intimidating. Your boss, where's he going? The boss of me is me. I want teeth! I want answers! Wait till Black Mask's assassins get through with you. What assassin? <laughs> Whoever wins is gonna be famous and rich. I found this so unlikable the first time I played this game, but over the years and looking back at it now, I, I understand it more. You see, this is Batman super early on. No one knows of him. He needs to establish that fear aspect of the Dark Knight. The whole point in Batman is to be a beacon of hope, but also to make criminals think twice before they commit a crime because Batman could be around. He needs to establish that baseline. And to do that means he has to talk like this, I guess. Anyway, we bump into a younger Gordon who is still pre-gym membership from Arkham Asylum. It's nice to see him again, but he's a lot more anti-Batman this time around and tries to arrest Batman. Nope. We escape to the Batcave and, oh wow, this is the third game in the series and we're only now setting foot into the Batcave under Wayne Manor. Okay. I like the style of the Batcave. It reflects that Batman hasn't been doing this very long. Many areas are very makeshift or currently being worked on. One of the devs, I believe, stated that the game is around year two of Bruce's crusade, which makes sense given how much tech is here and how much tech is missing. Alfred is actually here as well, and he's a welcome addition. Ironically, the game trying to push the solidarity of Bruce Wayne's mission actually gives us a far more tangible support cast. I appreciate it. Assassin, sir. As in more than one. That's right. And you heard this from the mouth of a crocodile man. His name is Killer Croc. He's already behind bars. Oh, I pity his cellmate. I don't. Anyway, we review a log from Black Mask that we got at Black Gate. It turns out Black Mask, am I really gonna say black this much? Anyway, it turns out Black Mask has arranged a ragtag group of supervillains to kill off Batman tonight for a sweet 50 mil. That's a lot of cash. I wonder if I can turn myself in for that. In this group, we have the big bad Killer Croc who's already off the board. We have cool guy Deathstroke who was actually promoted very heavily in the advertisements for this game. I remember seeing him in like every trailer. We have Firefly and a super bendable Copperhead. Hello. Deadshot we already know and is probably gonna be a very easy boss fight. New guy Electrocutioner, Lady Shiva, and Super Soldier Bane, who is also looking like he's lost a bit of mass throughout these games. 
Okay, this is an impressive lineup. Even though Killer Croc being on this list is a little scammy, I love the idea of Batman having a hit on him. It adds stakes because it's less about Batman just happening to stumble upon these villains and foil in their plans. These villains are more actively seeking us out and hunting us down as we track down Black Mask. All right, so we have a goal in mind now, find Black Mask. So we head to the city and this world map is great. I get that Arkham City needed to feel more shut in because at the end of the day, it was a prison, but this Gotham feels huge and it's oozing with personality. Throw in the Christmas theme and the heavy snow, it feels like I'm generally playing in the same Gotham that Michael Keaton was in for Batman Returns. It's great. I find it wild that I can just go to the chemical plant where Joker fell into the vat of acid and it looks so cool. We don't have to come here for anything in this game. It's just here. That is great attention to detail. I love it. It's so good, in fact, that I will give a pass on the developers for including the grapple boost because technically this thing won't be made until Arkham City and even then it was being prototyped. That's 10 years away. I know it's for gameplay purposes. Going through the city without it would be so frustrating, but we've got to poke fun at the continuity here. Anyway, we interrogate Santa Claus to find out that the Penguin is the guy to speak to about Black Mask. Now I get why people fear the Batman. This is a great shot. Wake up. What happened? <laughs> the final offer is the next destination. It's where Penguin hosts a fight club for his thugs. But before we can get to him, we have to go through the Electrocutioner, who's one of the assassins on Batman's list. Honestly, I completely forgot about this interaction. While gearing up for the boss fight, I thought I'd let the dialogue play out. And it's just pure shit talking. <laughs> I ain't here to talk. I'm here to kick your ass. This is your last chance. Name yourself after an animal and you're gonna get eaten. Just think of me as a bad zapper. Now, come to the light. This fight will be too hit. Me hitting you, and you hitting 50,000 volts. You above for me to a lesson in pain. I know, intimidate me. Black Mass must be out of his mind to put up 50 million for your head. Name yourself after a... So when Batman takes him out in one hit, it legitimately caught me off guard. It, it gave me a serious laugh. The guy comes in with so much swagger, we just put him to sleep quicker than Zaz in Asylum. We continue exploring the final offer and I love the aesthetics here. One thing this game does really well is set pieces. Every area feels unique. The thing with Asylum is though they did try to change up the island a lot, you were still in an asylum. There wasn't much they could play around with. City could have done that and Wonder City kind of proved they could, but they stuck with a very basic idea for the aesthetics. Here, they just go wild. We have so many places we explore and so much attention to detail is put in. The downside is while we're exploring, the entire time we hear Tracy on the intercom. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a British lad. I live in the United Kingdom. God, I hate her Cockney accent. It drives me insane. She feels like every EastEnders character melded into one. It's just pure hate. <clears throat> anyway, we bump into Slade Wilson, AKA Deathstroke. And unlike the Electrocutioner, this boss fight is brilliant. It appears the game is over before it even begins. I'm not playing games, Slade. Not only does it feel like we're fighting an enemy with just as much training as our boy Bats, but the fight has multiple stages with different gimmicks you have to work out. For instance, when Slade just pulls out a remote claw, 
which he shoots at Batman, which pulls in these explosives you have to counter and throw back at him. It is brilliant, and not having the counter icon meant I really needed to pay attention to his moveset. I had to find my own openings. This is amazing. This is like a FromSoft boss. My only gripe is that the fighting area is quite small, so whenever you get close to the edge of the ring, it will force Batman to do this combo to kind of move Deathstroke back into the ring. This wouldn't be a problem, but if you found an opening and you start wailing on Slade to get some damage on the board, if you hit this invisible wall, it will reset him and you have to do it all over again. It does get quite frustrating and it happens a lot. We're only two hours in and one of the boss fights is one of the best things the series has done. I I'm really impressed. This fight alone is probably one of the best boss fights. I'd say the freeze fight from C is slightly above, but this is good. This is good shit, man. <laughs> Unfortunately for Slade, there is a power level diff here, and we defeat him. It's over, Slade. What are you? I'm Batman. We catch up with Penguin, but unfortunately he has locked himself in his safe room. And this kind of takes him out for the rest of the game. I, I guess he just spends his time here banging his assistants. Well, as you can see, I got the answer. Have a Merry Christmas and piss off. What a legend. He does tell us that Black Mass shouldn't really be a problem because he's dead. <laughs> Apparently Black Mass was killed off in his apartment. We need to go check this out because if that is the case, I mean, we're off the hook with these hitmen, right? Leaving the final offer, we do encounter this Red Hood guy, and man, Gotham has a serious issue of these Red Hood guys. His name's Anarchy, and he wants to raise the people to overthrow Gotham's elites. Not a bad ideal, but the way he goes about it is a bit explosive. <laughs> He's planting bombs around the city where innocent people could really easily get killed. So we need to stop him, like now. This is the first of many side missions we'll get throughout the game, and I'm gonna be honest, these are handled better than Arkham City. I'm sorry, it's my opinion, but they really are. They are tailored to open up after main plot beats, and though this one's a bit of a black sheep because it doesn't really tie into the main story much, the others do, so yeah, we'll, we'll see those in a bit. They, they tend to have some great payoffs, which was again, something that was lacking from Arkham City. We destroy the bombs and we end up back at the courthouse, seems familiar, and I think the fear aspect of this job is starting to pay off, because this guy is scared stiff. The boss fight is a massive brawl with waves of enemies while Anarchy is throwing these Molotov cocktails at us. Halfway through, he'll just jump in and start fighting as well, very similar to the Joker fight in City. And we take him out, that's our first side mission done. We head over to Black Mass Suite and we use Detective Vision to work out what really happened here. I find it wild that Bruce's tech here is far more evolved than anything we see in Asylum and City because we can just recreate the whole crime scene and fast forward and rewind at will what happened to find new bits of evidence. These are few and far between, but they are an absolute joy to play with. This is the first time I really felt like a detective in these games. We figure out that there's four people in this room, Black Mask who got captured, a fake Black Mask that was sent in and shot, the killer and Black Mask's girlfriend who gets taken out unfortunately. She was sending text messages to Roman Sionis about someone named the Joker. Someone killed Black Mask, but this crime took place several days ago, and I saw Black Mask earlier tonight. The only answers I have raise more questions. Who is the Joker? Was he the killer here, or is he one of the assassins? I have a body, an unknown shooter, and an unknown assailant who attacked the shooter. I need to match the DNA samples against the records in the National Criminal Database to identify who was in the room. Turns out this all links to a suspicious but probably cute individual called the Joker. Wow! 
To find out more about this killer, we need to hack into the GCPD database, which means we have to stealth through the precinct. Again, another area that's really cool because we don't really want to be hurt in these cops. Most of them aren't corrupt, but they are a means to an end for Batman right now. We need to get that information. I tried to avoid most fights in this section, but, but there's a section here where the SWAT are talking about taking Black Mass offer to kill the Batman for the money. I think you're supposed to overhear this and avoid the fight as it's a room full of armored SWAT cops. But these guys need to learn a lesson in vengeance. Hi, listen up. While you chokers were playing cleanup crew at Black Gate, I was making us some money. I worked out a deal with our pal Black Mask. If any of us can kill the bat before the assassins get to him, we get the bounty. All fifty million dollars of it. And for those of you who ain't too good with the math, that means we all retire early. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Let's take him down then. Yeah. What are we waiting for? He's oh, using smoke! That was a tough fight and honestly one that I don't think you're supposed to do, but I really enjoyed it. With my dopamine popping off, we bump into Barbara, who is far too comfortable being around an angry man in a dominatrix cosplay. Cool poem box. You're bypassing the network security. Hmm. But you'll need to physically bridge the intranet to the external telecom wires if you want to uplink remotely. This kind of knowledge could get a young girl into a lot of trouble. They run under the building. What does? The telecom wires. You can access them through the sewers. We talk for a bit and we get interrupted again, and I tell the SWAT team to sit down. I think I'm not supposed to do. I think I'm supposed to run away. What can I say? I'm just built different. And we head to the sewers where Black Mask is apparently planting bombs under Gotham. Wait, okay, so Black Mask is currently captured, but also put on a hit on Batman while trying to destroy Gotham, while also simultaneously being dead. This is getting far too confusing. Let's just head to the bank and ask the man himself what the hell is going on. We infiltrate the bank and we catch up with Black Mask and the twist is revealed. This whole time, you hired the assassins. 
You've been running Sionis' operation. Well, technically it's my operation now. Isn't that right, boys? You got me. Now let her go. Oh, life would be so simple if you were all I wanted. No, no, you're just a teeny little distraction compared to what I've got up my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this twist could have been amazing. Before Arkham Origins was released, we got the standard advertisements. Unfortunately, they heavily involved the Joker. I just wish they kept it under wraps before launch. We were all thinking the Joker was dead from the last game, and this being a prequel, there's no harm in thinking we just assume it's so early in Batman's career that he probably doesn't even meet the Joker at this point. Also, if they remove the mention of the Joker in the investigation part of Black Mask Suite, or at the very least use an alias like Jack White, like the Joker has done in the past, you know, just make it a little bit harder to work out, you know? I generally find it weird that the Joker would use his Joker moniker this early in his career as well. Don't get me wrong, it is great to have him back as the big bad, but this was nowhere near the clay-faced double Joker twist at the end of Arkham C, I'm sorry. But the music, oh god, the music is so good. Joker's theme goes so hard in this game. It's like the perfect mix of the Christmas theme and just how creepy and messed up the Joker is. The track is called Carol of Bells and it is my favorite bit of music in these games so far. If you guys want to check out an amazing version of this song that's got like some vocals and it's just very epic sounding, uh, Samuel Kim Music actually done a version that is so good. I'll put a link in the description. Go check that out. It's also great to see the laughing gas make a return, though unfortunately the Joker gets away and the bank clerk doesn't make it. Though she's pretty happy about it. Leaving the bank, we hear a baby crying, so we head over and investigate. It's a trap! Shiva. Lady Shiva attacks Batman and we learn that she's not really that interested in the bounty on my head. She just wants to test Batman to see how strong he is. Her test is only really just saving this cop and then tracking down her assassins. There's not too much meat on these bones, but I still like how she's one of the main assassins, though her whole quest line is basically optional. Like I said before, this is how I prefer my side quest. If you're going to do it, try and get it to at least somewhat connect to the overarching plot or it just kind of feels so redundant. So Deadshot is kind of like Lady Shiva. He doesn't really do anything until a bit later on when suddenly a GCPD plane is looking over Batman and it gets taken out by a single shot. This is a pretty cool detective mode section where we work out the shot was from none other than Deadshot and he just straight up says, yo, I'm at the bank. You want to you wanna come fight? <laughs> Snipers only, 1v1 on Rust, let's go. Now unlike Arkham City where it was just one button press and he was done, this boss fight is so annoying, oh my god. It's a full stealth section, uh, very much like Harvey Dent's boss fight in Arkham City with Catwoman. What's super annoying though is that he will just randomly start talking smack to his thugs. Now, that wouldn't be a problem, but if you're learning their patrol route, that's all fucked up now. <laughs> it completely sets things out of sync. If you take out all of the enemies and then go to him and do some damage, he just runs away and then takes a hostage. And I don't know, man, it just seemed to bug out a lot for me and I kept getting killed. I had to redo this boss fight like eight or nine times. It wasn't fun, but I'd still take this over the Arkham City fight any day. After that, Barbara hacks into Batman's comms and asks him to help destroy some guns that the SWAT have let out into the public. I need a favor. Some evidence crates have gone missing. Army grade stuff and no one here is doing anything about it. So I'm sending you their GPS location information. Helping her does lead to some interesting dialogue and it's a pretty good side mission. She starts to agree with Batman's ideals and the work they've done together tonight destroying these guns is more than what Gotham's police force has done in months. I'm sure she she- I'm sure she she- I'm sure- I'm sure she she- I'm sure she will become a great ally. Well, we have no other leads, so let's head to Black Mask Steel Mill to see if we can find some clues. And we do, we actually find the totally real, not fake, 
Black Mask. We head over to interrogate him. Wrong answer. By my count, there are still nine more ribs I can break. Copperhead. Tell him and I'll pay you whatever you want. Make them suffer it up. An empty promise from a fallen king. I know about the Joker. Couple of freaks. You two deserve each other. What did you do to me? I killed you. And in a few more minutes, your body will realize it. After mounting Batman, she poisons him. And this opens up a section where Batman's kind of hallucinating. And we see a lot of people that have died. Hero. A real hero would have saved me. Savior, you're a curse upon this city. A plague on all of Gotham. Leave us alone. Or might die. What would your father say if he could see you now? throwing away your family's hard-earned fortune on these frivolous nightly escapades. And for what? You're not this city's savior. You're a Wayne. And a spoiled, wasteful disappointment of a Wayne at that. We really get to see that these losses greatly impact Bruce's psyche. Alfred's trying to make an antidote for Bruce, but we need to hold off Copperhead, and that means a boss fight. You guys know what I'm going to say. This boss fight is great. Being poisoned makes Bruce hallucinate even more. So we have to take on several coppers. I'm pretty sure I had a dream like this before. Again, like the Slade fight, there are different stages. And this is quite difficult with no counter icon. I really, really have to pay attention to these movesets. And it gets a little bit over cluttered. Fortunately, the death screen is, uh, um, well... I bet you never expected the end to come like this. We defeat Copperhead and she tells us that Joker is at the Grand Hotel. Unfortunately, while we were fighting Copperhead, Black Mass has escaped and gone straight back to that criminal lifestyle. So now we have a side mission to destroy his weapon caches and stop him once and for all. Again, this is how I wish all the side missions were handled. Now I can just leave this case file open and go finish the story. I don't have to deal with Black Mask anymore in this playthrough. But he was part of the main plot of this game and he got away because of me. I feel responsible for him getting away because it was during the boss fight with Copperhead. It makes my priorities and Batman's priorities the same. We both feel like we have to go deal with this now. It's drastically different to where in C, Penguin could be just killing off cops at his museum, but I'm too busy flying around the city giving Zaz payphone therapy. This is what I was trying to say in City. It's too random for me. Whereas in Origins, it makes sense. And I know a lot of you guys in the comments didn't agree with my take on the side missions. But that's that to me is the problem. It having absolutely no relevance to the main overarching plot. Or it being part of the main plot that then just like splinters off. One of them is better for me. And it's Origins. Anyway, back on Black Mask, we head to the old church and have a pretty decent stealth section. We take him out. Right, onto the hotel. We overhear a meeting between the remaining assassins, Bane, Firefly, Electrocutioner, and Joker. Joker decides to kill off the Electrocutioner because he was too busy watching Guy in the Tie on YouTube, then pay attention to this meeting. Welcome to our first quarterly performance review. As you can see here, Batman deaths are coming in far below projections. <laughs> People want more Joker, we get we more Joker. Really more villains, not a problem. A bigger location, far more interesting main story. And by we, so do you have anything else to contribute? I didn't think so. I salute you, Electrocutioner. You went out doing what you loved. 
Batman then just straight up robs this man's corpse for his electro drip and we get his gloves. This adds to the combat, which I haven't talked about yet because it's pretty much the exact same as Arkham City. But now that we have these gloves, when we do enough damage to enemies, we can activate the gloves themselves, which now not only helps us with countering usually uncounterable moves like the stun baton or shields, but it also raises Batman's overall damage by quite a lot. So standard fights now are more of a joke than they have ever been in the series. I'm not going to lie. Batman soon discovers that the Joker has turned the hotel into his idea of a twisted funhouse. We climb up the hotel and we finally meet up with the clown prince himself and we politely ask the Joker to stop. But Bane makes us a freeway and we have to deal with him first. Now this Bane is my favorite Bane. He is far less Mexican Hulk and is actually pretty cunning and his fight proves pretty difficult as he's far more agile than I'm used to him being. Even though we defeat Bane, he makes an escape, but Joker forgets that friendly fire is on and he takes some pot shots at Bane. Unfortunately, Bane's gun is bigger. Oh man, I love this cutscene. It really shows how chaotic the Joker is. Right here, the Joker bites off more than he can chew. Bane's shooting a rocket at him. He, he accepts that this is how he's going to go out. And it's pretty fire. I mean, he's going out in a blaze of glory as he's flinged off a rooftop and starts speed running a 50 story drop. You can see that Joker's A-OK -okay with this. No problem. Batman, of course, saves him. Granted, a few love taps on the way down. But you see, this really messes up the Joker as he doesn't understand why Batman saved him. Now why? Why? Why would you do that? Joker has been trying to kill him all night and all Batman had to do was nothing and Gotham would be saved. And honestly, it wouldn't even be Batman killing him as it was Bane's doing to start with. Fortunately, Gordon arrives just in time and arrests the Joker and gets him ready to ship to Blackgate. I'm sure that's going to stick. Batman tells Joker not to do anything bad or he'll be pissed. Joker says bet. <laughs> anyway, Batman heads back to the Batcave to pick up the new cum grenades and him and Alfred have a bit of a falling out. Master Bruce, stop. Master Bruce. Bruce, I will not in good conscience allow you to go. You're outmatched by these assassins. What? You're not some hardened vigilante. You're a young man with a trust fund and too much anger. You're in over your head and I... I don't want this to be your end. Batman leaves to find Bane and, well, Alfred does offer an olive branch as he doesn't like Bruce Senpai being mad at him. It's actually a really quick interaction. I don't know why this was here other than to just create some artificial tension. Indeed. Uh, look, I'm sorry about what I said before you left. I hope you understand. It's just because... It's okay. I understand. It's a shame too, because I love Alfred and Bruce's dialogue throughout this game. Alfred comes across so wholesome. So far, in fact, that when it hits midnight in game, he goes through the effort to actually say Merry Christmas to Bruce. It's midnight, sir. I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas. You too. It's really heartwarming. Anyway, while Batman is searching for Bane, the Joker is taken to Blackgate and he gets a psychiatric evaluation by none other than Dr. Harleen Quinzel. Uh, oh. <laughs> Hi. The Joker opens up and it's kind of crazy how much Batman saving him has made him snap. This is the start of his obsession with the Cape Crusader. And as well as the monologue about him talking about why that is, we also get some cool shots of his origin. Joker talks about how this new person that's just come into his life is cool and funny and cute. And I, ju I just want to smooch him. <laughs> Harleen mistakes this as him talking about her. But unfortunately for her, this is the very least a rebound relationship till he gets to see bats again. I don't get the Batman demon part though. It looks really cool, but I don't understand why he looks like that. Other than it's the Joker. <laughs> During our search for Bane, we hear that the Mad Hatter has kidnapped a girl he's calling Alice. You were very cordially, cordially, cordially. You were very cordially invited to a party. And it will be a grand affair. Grand affair. Grand affair. And it will be a grand affair hosted by the Hatter. 
We do hope that you can come. You can come. You can come. We do hope that you can come to share in all the joy. Greetings and salutations, Batman. I am Jervis Tetch, inventor, entrepreneur, and part-time haberdasher. You must be wondering why it is I sought you out. Well, I have an employment opportunity I'd like to discuss with you. Help me! Please! If you can hear this, he's going to... <laughs> oh, don't mind Alice. Poor dear, her mind is all aflutter, and who can blame her after all she's been through? But I'll have her writer's reign soon enough. This got me really excited as I loved the section with him and C, be it far too short. And this game doesn't disappoint. We have creative fights, creative puzzles through this section. And this entire time is insanely good visuals. Honestly, I want the Mad Hatter to be in every game. Saving Alice, we head to Bane's headquarters and we find out that he has pieced together that Bruce Wayne is in fact Batman. Again, I love having a more intelligent Bane. He's done what most villains can't do in a matter of one night. Worried for Alfred's safety, we head straight to the Batcave, quickly dealing with Firefly on the bridge. This boss fight is the weakest to me in the game. Honestly, it bugged out far too often, especially this section here. I think I was supposed to pull out my back claw, but he got stuck on this thing here. And because the animation doesn't play out, it just completely messed up my camera for the rest of the boss fight. What? Anyway, I had to redo that boss fight and thanks to that glitch, we took too long to get to Alfred and he's dead. Bruce, not willing to lose another daddy, brings him back with the electric gloves, barring a few broken ribs. After nearly losing Alfred, Batman's resolve is absolutely shattered and he just wants to curl up on the sofa, eat his Christmas dinner and watch the new Doctor Who special. But Alfred won't let him stop now. And it's just in time because apparently the Joker has taken over Blackgate because of course Joker has taken over Blackgate. Why can't this prison do the one thing it's supposed to do? Keep the criminals behind the bars. <laughs> God damn it. What was I, what was I talking about? Oh, uh, some monologue about Batman's not an island, but he's an... Isle Man? Ah, uh, I don't know. He sets out to Blackgate to stop the Joker and Bane, while making super best friends with the cops along the way. Ah, yay, how nice. Man, I love Arkham Asylum. God damn it. <laughs> if there's one thing I've learned from doing these videos, is that game is a masterpiece. Speaking of games though, Joker has one more game up his sleeve. Joker has set up an elaborate trap to make Batman violate his no-kill rule. Bane has strapped a heart monitor charging the battery for the electric chair the Joker is now sitting on. And if Batman refuses to kill Bane, then the Joker will die. And if he fails to kill either one of them, then Batman dies. If the monitor is removed, they all die. The stakes are pretty damn high. Batman finds a loophole though and kills Bane and brings him back with the shot gloves like he did with Alfred. Now, I'm not sure how this works on the karma system, but this is still technically murder, right? I mean, his heart stops. Bringing Bane back, though, just kind of pisses him off more. And he takes a massive shot of the venom, which makes him turn into the Hulk beast we've all come to know of him. And we have a pretty mad boss fight. You just have to take him out stealthy while he's running around this square room. Once we defeat him, we see that he's had some severe memory loss, which is quite convenient for us, as now he can't tell people we're Bruce Wayne. We catch up with the Joker, which is also quite convenient for us, <laughs> and have our final confrontation. And this was pretty funny. I didn't want to miss any dialogue in this scene, so I just let it play out. And as I don't have a counter, I didn't realize that the Joker was about to shoot me. <laughs> what a night! <laughs> Fresh off the kill, and back for more, eh? Bane's still alive. Now that's not funny. All this, all this rage, all directed at me, and for what? You know, if you'd actually let me finish a sentence, you might learn something! You might learn that we're not so different. You might learn something about yourself! You need to learn to shut up. You know, it's sad, really. 
Makes me feel like you don't care to see the good side in me. Well, I guess learning is a lot to ask from you, meat for brains. The end, I guess. <laughs> you have acquired the bad ending. Anyway, we showed Joker that we're into the really weird and rough stuff, though leaving him pretty satisfied. And that's the end of the night. Joker now has his I love the bat locket, and we continue to bloom our relationship over the next few years, right up until Arkham City. Though this is yet another Batman vs. Joker story, it was such a blast to play through, and at no point did I feel like it was getting drawn out. And it actually, in my opinion, fixes an issue I had at the end of the Arkham City video. There, I didn't really understand why the Joker attacks Batman and ends up unaliving himself in the process. Reading the comments and seeing your guys' interpretations was great, and I, I loved reading through them, but nothing really clicked for me, nothing made it make sense. Now, this is my opinion, but after playing through this game, I now see that death as more of a ironic death. Joker's ground zero in the Arkhamverse is the moment Batman saves him at the hotel. He doesn't really get it. Why would he save me? Why doesn't he kill me? It's a shortcut and a surefire way to save so many lives. Why does my life outweigh the thousands they both know will be killed if Joker's not dealt with? So over the years, he just keeps pushing Batman more and more here and there. And at the end of the city, he just pushed too far and screwed himself over. The London Green in that game was just that. He just wanted to stab Batman and then have him still give him the cure. Or I guess alternatively, stab Batman and set him so far over the edge that he kills the Joker. Both those scenarios, Joker wants. Instead, he shoots himself in the foot and ends up ending his own life. It's so fitting, and I'm sure a lot of people figured this out years ago, or maybe I'm completely off base here, but... It fills a plot hole I had, in my opinion, of Arkham City. And I wasn't expecting that from this game. But we're not done yet. Before we dive into my thoughts, there was a short piece of DLC release called Cold Cold Heart, which is all centered around Mr. Freeze on New Year's Eve, as he breaks into the Wayne Manor and captures Ferris Boyle during a political party. You see, them two had a fallen out. Ferris wanted to run sus experiments on Mr. Freeze's wife, Nora, while they were trying to cure her Huntington's. Freeze didn't like that so much, and it led to them having a fight which caused an explosion and made Mr. Freeze the Blue Man Group tribute act he is today. This DLC is only about two hours, and it has quite a bit of running backwards and forwards, but you start the DLC at Wayne Manor, which is awesome. We finally get to play around in the manor, and Alfred is an absolute legend. Butler's gone crazy. Are you cowards afraid of an old man? Ugh. Just take it easy. <laughs> Hope that face wasn't worth something. We also get a cool new suit called the Evo suit, which looks like it would seriously weigh Batman down, but apparently it doesn't because of the honeycomb design. All right, Bruce, why don't you wear this all the time going forward? If it's nothing but beneficial, why is this not the standard? <laughs> There's quite a few stealth sections and fight sections, new enemy types that can freeze you, which is actually pretty interesting and makes you prioritize them over any other thug in a fight. But not much is really done until we get to Mr. Freeze and his boss fight I was really looking forward to. I assumed they were going to one up the Arkham City boss fight or at the very least do the same thing and to an extent they do, but it doesn't really work. Freeze doesn't follow a pattern or a heat signature or anything. He just kind of moves around randomly. You can be going to do a stealth takedown and he just randomly turns around for no reason. It's really frustrating, and that's after you do a section where you have to destroy these free canisters. And again, Freeze can just randomly spot you and attack you. It's such wasted potential. Uh, it's really sad to see that this is the last taste of Arkham Origins I'll have. But we take him down, as well as Ferris, who's actually turned out to be a bad guy. Who knew? And that's all she wrote. That is the end of Batman Arkham Origins. And with the DLC complete, that is Batman Arkham Origins. And my God, I was so wrong about this game. I have spent so many years thinking this is the worst game in the franchise and generally just having a really weird disgust with how this game launched. And I do think that was valid. The game was a mess when it first came out. But going back to it now, 
I can't believe my opinion has completely flipped. The gameplay is just as good and I had more of a fun time with it this time around just because of the counter not being there. So I can't really give too much props to Arkham Origins for that because you could do that in the other games. But we have way more gadgets to play around with. The stealth sections are a lot more interesting now as well as the detective mode. The story is absolutely quality. Like other than that twist, I, I really wish could have been handled slightly better. It, it's almost perfect and the music is absolutely phenomenal. I love the theming of it being around Christmas. And though the DLC, there wasn't much going on, at least it was two hours of more Arkham Origins, which at the end of the day, as a downloadable piece of content, that's all you really want, right? Just to fill out that playtime. I feel so bad that throughout my years, I have told people to avoid this game or not to play this game. Just in general, when talking about the Arkham series, I've just said, yeah, you might as well skip that one. God, I was an asshole. <laughs> Like I said, this is my second favorite Arkham game so far, and we only have one more to do. Asylum to me still feels like the peak of what I want from a Batman game, but I do think that's my personal opinion because I'm kind of tired of open world games. I feel like we lose a lot of structure in these projects because they want to go big and open. People might prefer the open world. I mean, you guys in the comments have said you prefer the open world gameplay to the more linear style. It's literally just which gameplay you prefer. We still have Night, but I do feel like Asylum is going to be my number one Batman game. But I'm curious to see if Arkham Knight to me is better or worse than Arkham Origins. But that's the next project. So before we dive into that, Thank you so much for watching the video. If you made it this far, I am really impressed because that is a lot of my voice that you've listened to and I don't know why you did that. <laughs> but to show that you've made it this far in the video, please, in the comment section below, just do something simple. Merry Christmas. It will really confuse people because it's March. <laughs> but it will let me know that you guys have watched the whole video. And also let me know what you think of Arkham Origins. Did you have the same experience as me or did you like Origins from the get-go or did you just not like it and you still don't like it. I'm curious to see. But if this game has taught me anything, it's that you shouldn't judge a game just based on your first interaction with it. It's always worth a few years later just going back and, and giving it another go. I want to give a massive shout out to my Patreons. Since I opened the doors on the last video, I've had a couple come through and um, honestly, it's mad. Thank you so much. Massive shout out to a Screaming Cloaker and Pit Stab for basically just supporting the channel it's it's really nice to see and it's super helpful if you guys would like to join the patreon please uh click the link on the screen go check it out i try to drop some like teaser stuff there before the videos go live also before i dip i'm sorry i'm posting a lot of links at the end of this video but uh, i do stream on twitch uh i do use a face cam so i've kind of blacked that out on the screen right now because i know some people like me prefer their youtubers to have like a disembodied voice uh so i didn't want to ruin that if you don't want to go check out the twitch but if you do we play a lot of pvp stuff like overwatch and apex just stuff that i like to rot my brain with so if you want to go hang out I, I stream there quite frequently but that'll be it for the video thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one peace